Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest is an artist who has mastered the art of creatively blending dance hall, R&B, and Afro beats. This global entertainer sound can be heard on major collaborations with artists like Ty Dolla Sign, Tory Lanez, Idris Elba, and even Ed Sheeran. Please welcome singer, songwriter, and dance hall star, Ooh. Cranium. Yay. I'm here. You're yes, here. You are. Yes. yes. Good stuff. How you doing, brother? I'm alive. You're alive. That's the most Keep important. talking. Talk Keep talking. Though. Yeah. Yep, right. that talking. Uh, he said, all right, he, he, all right. that talking got it all yeah. going on. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of that, uh -huh. um, you, your uncle is Screwdriver, yeah. which mm. is super fun. Um, but how did you get into the dance hall game? Um, to be honest with you, I started off, I, I feel like everyone in the Caribbean mm. doesn't have a chance but to go to church on, on Sundays. Yes. So back then, I was always in the church and I realized that I had the talent of singing because every time I'm on stage and I sing, I used to see your girls react. I'm like, mm, mm. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, the girls uh, responded, huh? Yeah. yeah. And so, then eventually I just, you know, got, I just stopped into it and I feel like this is what I wanted. And I just so focused. where did you get the name Cranium from? Actually, I was in the studio once because I grew up in Queens, New York. Mm -hmm. And I was in the studio just recording and mm -hmm. um, this guy was like, yo, you didn't, you didn't write the record. I just flew off the top of my head. So it was oh. like, you should call yourself Cranium. Oh, you don't. Oh, that's yeah, you don't write it. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's hot. That's 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 vibe like just chilling mm -hmm. uh, you know like on the beach just chilling mm -hmm. if you're going through something you put on some reggae music it's like a Bob Marley person yes. and then dance hall is like the more up tempo you know like yes. it's like the heart of the the streets it's, mm -hmm. it's very it's very raw it's very ranchy and we say whatever we want to say and mm -hmm. yeah very so it's, a lot of it's, very it's a lot of booty popping yes it's too. very very raw like down at the pasta pasta <laughs> exactly yeah. you know what's going on yes you know what's going on yes so you're born in Montego Bay Jamaica and then you're Miami, New York. Yeah. How did all three <laughs> of those locations kind of influence your music? I mean, it influences a lot because uh, I get to understand um, what it's like living amongst different cultures. Because yes. when I got to New York, it's so, you know, New York is like the melting pot of mm -hmm. different cultures. And I mean, so Africans, Jamaicans, Trinidadians. That's, that's, that's the whole thing. Yeah. I just so. got back from Carnival. I'm still there. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So it was just a vibe of just like, me just being mixed with everyone, mm -hmm. and then that's why I think myself because yeah. I feel like everybody's influenced by the environment. Yeah, and absolutely. That's what I got absolutely. From. Now, you <clears throat> in 2015, you dropped your first project, mm -hmm. which was called Rumors, yeah, which included your most notable hit, Nobody Has to Know. Correct. To date, it accumulated over half a billion streams. Yeah. So many streams, yeah, yeah. half a billion streams. Do you oh have gosh. any idea how, how any I Dia, rumors would be that successful. Did you know it was gonna turn up like that? The thing is, like to be honest with you, like we as the musicians, we we go to the studio and make songs. We don't know exactly what's gonna happen because I feel like the fans determine what record goes. But for me, it was very. It's like a major thing because dance and music is not necessarily priority in the mm. states. It's yeah, not, mm. and I'm true. saying it's like a big underground thing. Mm. So like when I see the record actually like starting picking up, I was like, okay, I don't mm -hmm. think I'm gonna be hungry too long anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I right. just, but I'm, I'm so, I'm so happy, and I'm, I'm really like, like so thankful that I'm still a part to like, you know what I mean, like represent and just push the, forward, the, the culture forward as much as possible. Why do you think it's so hard for a dance hall artist to break through mainstream? I feel, you know what, our music is not priority. It, mm -hmm. It's a flavor, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So so because it's a flavor, it's like, um, it's every no one day we probably get a record in, you know what I mean? There's a lot of structure that needs to be done to get it pushed forward. And a lot of people don't give it a chance, actually. So it takes a very long time. because nobody lot of fun, though. I like it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, when it come on, I bet you they all be dancing. You have to dance. That's the thing. Like, dance hall it's, is the heart of the people. It feels so good. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. the music just feels so good. It makes you, it makes you want to you be happy. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, it, really it really is. Listen, you had so much uh, success with, with uh, again, the... Um, nobody, nobody has to know. Yeah. So you had Drake who came back and, and, and mm. even sang it during a pro yeah. one of his performances, and then you also had a number of people, especially like Chris Brown, yeah. mm -hmm. that it emerged again. Like, did you know it was going to be that much of a success for you? You know what? I didn't, I didn't think for a second it would be that big. But what I think was that um, the argument of the record of saying nobody has to know, I feel like. 
I knew it would have something. It just reminded me of like it wasn't me by Shaggy, you know? Yeah. Because people are always sneaking. They just act like they don't, but people are always sneaking. So yeah. because that people are always sneaking. <laughs> people are always sneaking. <laughs> always sneaking. <laughs> so always sneaking. So yeah. I, knew, oh, I just knew for a fact, yes. yeah. It would have yes. any fake, yeah. You've been able to work with so many incredible artists who, who mm -hmm. jumped on your records and you've jumped on theirs from Ed Sheeran, Lil' Kim, Ro Timmy. Do you think about uh, some of the artists that you want to work with and collaborate with? Like who's on your bucket list? Actually, you know, I don't really think about which I want to work with. It's more like I'm going to studio, create a song, and I'm like, this guy would sound dope on it, and then I reach out to them. Type and you of reach thing. out to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but who, one person I wanted to work with at one point was like Usher, and I actually ended up working with him, and he gave me the best advice in my life. So. What, what was that advice? It was like, honestly, it was like internal, because I was going through some private stuff. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And like, he was like, I've been down that road, and like, he like, advised me. This is like, a, like, Three years ago. Yeah, you know but I mean, I mean you remember that and until the day I died. When somebody me. gives you some good advice, you yeah. carry it on. Yeah, you do. So that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you uh, dropped new new music, Midnight yes. Sparks, Correct. in December. Mm -hmm. Yes. How does it feel? It and feels good, yeah. man. It feels amazing. I mean, the record is doing good. The lead single is called In Charge, and I mean, a lot of lot of females love that record. And um, it's doing it's doing amazing. Yeah. Did you make it for women? Hundred percent. All my music is about women. Like I just love women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, you, you got a, you got a, a, a boo thing because you wrote a song on your album called Complexion, and it's like I'm, an ode to women. So is this from you? Are you inspired by your own woman? I'm singlish, but um, as far as singlish, watch the world, y'all. Watch the world, singlish. <laughs> I'm kind of playing with the girls, but then again, I'm not too committed. <laughs> singlish, uh, singlish. Uh, singlish. Uh, watch them listen. Don't be that's why it sounded like little baby <laughs> with the girls. Yeah, but as far as complexion is concerned, I've noticed Woman Month, and not only that. Um, um, I grew up with strong black woman, and I mean, yes. we all grew up with that. That, uh, that thing is in me naturally. And I mean, my grandmother had ten kids, and I, like, I, I grew in that whole house, and just I feel like it's 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 only right for me to um, show my appreciation to all, yes. all women across the world. That you know, I mean, take care of them, man. Take care of the family, and make sure that the man is good. Because sometimes we as men, no matter how much masculine we are, we always need a woman to say, "Hey, honey, you okay?" And that's the best thing. Yeah. Well, hey, Cream, are you okay? I'm alright. Alright, good. Thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Be sure to get Midnight Sparks, which is on all digital platforms. Give it up one more time for Cranium. Yeah.